All right, welcome everyone for another episode of Plant Nomads. First things first, I have made my modified variation of the remote auto mining base by Who. The uh, original variation had flat panels on top for solar. I've taken those out. I left the batteries in place, and what I did was I took the four-way or you know, the multi-sided connectors for the conveyors on the mining rigs and basically combined them with uh, conveyors between because I took all the storage out. And the idea being that the portable container here, you deploy the whole thing with the large container and then you take that out and using the mechanic I showed in the last episode with the magnetic lifter, you can swap the large containers out, giving you more storage capacity without having to break it down if you are using the unlimited mining. Now, it was mentioned uh, and Notor that did the uh, original fits for doing turning unlimited mining on in an existing game save did mention that you have to change the difficulty as well but I also used another suggestion which was go in and set the maximum limit of items from each spot as 9.999 million so basically just shot 10 million on everything so either way I should be covered now for unlimited mining with everything going on but basically I will make it where I have that little transport mining rig that I could drop the whole thing off and then bring it back just the storage containers and swap them out like I have here with the magnetic lifter and because of that I no longer really need the uh, auto miner here so I have already pulled everything out I'm going to break it down shortly we're going to play some more with the magnetic lifter today starting with moving this new mining rig to a new location. Now, of course, I did use this rig before, where all I did was extend on it last time and set it up to use the storage container, so I could technically leave this, but I'm not going to. All right, now I've cut the power off on the other one. I'm just gonna kind of set this down best I can. You see, it's, it's nice, it kind of jiggles it a little bit. And now that it's settling, uh, it looks like, yep, yeah, I don't have any problem with that. This should keep it from hopefully bouncing all over the place. It's kind of pushed down and w a little bit of a wiggle. Uh, it should be producing now. And yeah, there we go. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it did not have any cobalt in it before. And suddenly it's got some cobalt. Let's double check again. Still says only 30s. Come on. 30, 30. All right, so somewhere I, I feel like it's got to be doing something because it should not have anything in it. I made sure to try and save it with it on the platform where nothing would be inside. Oh, yeah, look. Carbon, that was like 45, 40, something like that. It is starting to collect. And I feel like it's time to go do some exploring because I've got a lot of stuff up here. I mean, there's that monument, that monument, that monument. Yes, I've already pretty much completed the main bulk of the storyline in terms of you know what we get from the journals and everything a lot of stuff that i'll go and be like oh hey you know let's read this and it'll just disappear from my inventory so you know there's certain things i can still do explore wise some stuff that is just already finished but let's go hop out and do a little bit of exploring because i do at least need to find some more crystal and here we go. There's my remote mining rig, the big site that I did originally with the forklift mechanism coming out here that has two of those setups. I might, you know, just stick with this for a moment. Actually, look at it. It's wobbling. Or was. I didn't touch it. I didn't bump into it, it's just wobbling. So this might be one of those things where like the physics... Oh yeah, look, it's moved, actually. I can see it. I'll hop down here and... Oh yeah. It's wobbled a little bit away from where it was. That was a lot closer, I think. It's probably due with this barely touching in one spot, making it have that weird physics collision and make it bounce away. Uh, that's why I kind of like the whole mechanism now with the magnetic lifter because I can use the mover tool to place things down and I don't have to worry about that weirdness with the physics but we're not gonna worry about that for now that's going to stay there I'm just going to keep going this way because honestly I've got a lot of zayanite I do not need any zayanite right now 
I need crystals. Let's get this going. Let's get my gun. Oh yeah, you think you're all bad. You're all tough. Well, you are taking a few shots, but not that many. Ha ha ha! Got one trophy part. Come on. Oh yeah. Dad, let's go ahead and reload. One shot's not worth getting hit over. I, I'm just getting hit and you're just like, whatever. I'm just gonna sit here and look menacing at you. So I killed four of them, got only one trophy part. Like, that seems a little imbalanced. You know, you think if it's gonna take 40 trophy parts, you definitely wanna just sit there and let them respawn over and over trying to get those parts because it's gonna take a while if you don't get one out of every four or five. And oh yeah, some gold, uranium. I'm really not too worried about resources. But I'll take the opportunity. Oh yeah, there you go, you're dead. Oh wait, I need to scan you. Stay right there, don't move. I said don't move. There we go. National Geographic, I thought I scanned them already. A uh, Nassau trophy, I really do think I scanned them already. Uh, problem with these is they like to roll away. The little roly, roly poly guys. Why is it that now, after Stranger Things, I look at these, they look like demo dogs? Like, seriously, that guy looks kind of like the little demo dogs in uh, Season 2 of Stranger Things. Well, it's not just that the rolly guys want to bounce off of things. It's that they routinely, I'll be targeting right at it, and it just kind of starts flickering like I'm not targeting, and then I am, then I'm not, then I am. And it just, the targeting on them is a little off at this point still. On my way to the monument, of course, I pick up a distress signal for a new location. So we're going to grab it because, hey, more supplies. You know, it's, it's not something to turn down. Obviously, I've already got pretty much everything I could possibly need from here in terms of scans. I don't think there's anything I have left to scan, actually, out of all the options available in the game blueprint or, you know, building block wise. So, just a few supplies, and of course, another stopping point. Try to find some animal trophies, and hopefully look for some, you know, crystals somewhere. I really feel like I need a way to grow my own crystals. Maybe we'll get that in a, a future update. Ah, right in front of my black toad, a little bit of carbon crystal. I actually get anything crystal but no no crystals at all from that all right then uh you guys a lot of you guys not like the godillas three crystal spires and not a single bit of normal crystal just the regular resources well that's not working out so well for me right now so five crystal spires and a pile of dead cerebral bodies i've only got 12 cerebral parts and no crystals from that Usually they're like an orangish red color. Uh, let's check this out. All blue. Oh, I have to look. There's more monuments I'm going to go to. So if they're all showing blue, I'll assume it's just from me doing that thing with the, the monument. Oh, look. That's not right. They put it underwater. How are they supposed to use it underwater? Look at that. That's just bad design. This aliens are not as smart as they want us to believe. And yay, 10 crystal extraterrestrial civilization notes. Eridans was a misnomer. So, yo, know, the idea of the name of the game, Plant Nomads, is like, we're Plant Nomads, but really it's the civilization that we're following behind that we're planetary nomads. It's right here, traveling nomad civilization. They just go everywhere, uh, you know, and grab stuff and test things and do stuff like that. Let's see, uh, they create softwares of how to communicate with each other because they're technology independence. So yeah, different groups of them going everywhere around the galaxy or even the universe. I've got power. I just, I'm not going to use this one for that. And now another monument is showing blue. So I'm assuming it's just because I hacked the main monument and basically broke their containment stuff. Let's take a look. Universal alloys, crystal, and composites. Okay, rare material known as Xehanot. We've already got that. Okay. I like how it's like... 
it's almost like we our files are showing up in their places and their monuments look at this this is how much of the world i have not even explored yet it's really just such a big map especially when you consider how slow some of the vehicles move uh so i really feel like while i have this who drive and the overdrive who drive which does not work very well because it just causes things to flip out and causes the game to really struggle to keep up i think i want to try and find a true mobile base something with a lot of storage something with you know the capability to deploy mining rigs preferably not something that i have to stay there something that either uses the same mechanics for the you know the magnetic lifter or uses the mechanic of the forklift type thing something that can carry some sort of mining capability that will then integrate into the ship so that i can basically <laughs> just let it go and if you're wanting to see like size wise that's 15 kilometers away back to my base that little marker there that's the base if this was empyrean that'd be pretty much the majority of the planet uh i'm not sure about space engineers from my experience with space engineers i think that this is a smaller planet than what you get with the general scenario of space engineers but yeah, it's just such a massive planet. Yes, they were supposed to have interplanetary travel uh, as they advertised on Kickstarter for this game. But really, we've got such a massive planet. Of course, I want to stop on the way back at any conveniently located wreckages and you know, have points where I scan the map so I have a better, fuller picture like that. Perfectly fine. Look at that. All It's like a archipelago so that was a pretty good trip I, that was all the way from over in this area start up here across here you see just how much desert lowland desert i crossed right there and whole lava areas here and there it's just a lot of land but then you also have all these areas like if i really wanted to it'd be waterway all the way across up through those little cracks up through there you could get around pretty much entirely by water it would just not be the fastest thing and there are some areas of course you still want to have some kind of way to fly so if you're going to do something like that maybe using the leviathan base with some modifications to make it move the way you want and then uh using the air miner to dock on it because the air miner did have nice spots for uh docking and tying into the production system on the leviathan i looked at that design during my first season of gameplay i'm not going to do that again instead i'm going to try some other designs because I want to see what I can come up with. And I may still end up trying to redo something based off the Toad. Something like the Toad. But trying to integrate the mining rigs into the foot structures of the design itself. So when you land, you just turn on mining and can mine directly from that. I don't know how that would work very well, uh, if at all. But I might try that. Right now, I'm going to mess with some designs to function as a true mobile base something that contains every single thing and a lot of storage so i could just be like you know what i'm going to go fly away do this any modification i need to to be able to land it here and tie it into the system however i need to do on that and i may do some modification with that little spot to use with this magnetic lifter mechanism so technically if i find another design i add the lifter to it i could have that little portable floating, you know, purified water deuterium production facility to carry with me and just be like, you know, what? I'm going to drop it off here. I'm going to go deploy this stuff around here, do all this stuff in the area temporarily, come back, grab a bunch of deuterium out of it and then pick it up and carry it with me again. All right, so that's going to be it for this episode of Plant Nomads. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button, leave me a comment below, and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to keep it spicy this week, and I will see you in the next video.